Aya, yes. Ayman, yes. Mamukan, yes. Oh, eh? Yes, the guy. The guy, the one that look after. You must know the name because I mentioned it. Don't it is not an excuse that you don't know the name, because I I, I showed the introduction. Amen? Amen. So that means you didn't read it before you came, and if you have written down, you'll be able to see. I'm not going to because of that. Take us back. Yes, keep on mentioning them. Memukan. Yes. Eh? Vashti. I just say yeah. That's Queen Esther's name. Yes. And so on and uh, so forth. Amen. <laughs> and uh, we are still looking at the study layout. Queen Vashti deposed uh, or overthrown. That's the study layout. And we are going to, we have finished chapter one and we are going to chapter two. Oh, yes. Okay. There is something that I got home to write. And uh, which I put as comments. I don't know if I discussed that with you. Uh, that is commenting on what we have studied. I wrote some of the comments here. Okay. King Ahasuerus or Sagzix one lost after alcohol. Uh, King Hazerus's lust after alcohol might be a reason for his misbehavior. Let's discuss. Before we go to chapter 2, you know that he said, when the king was what? High in, High in the spirit. That is intoxicated. What happened? He called for Vashti and Vashti refused to come. Let's discuss on his misbehavior. Some might say that uh, what he has done is wrong. After celebrating, he, 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 uh, he was uh, intoxicated. And that you can, let's go quickly go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, 4 to 7, which we can always work along with this. Comparing chapter 1 of Esther, 7 to 12. That verse 9 says, Queen Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes on the seventh day when the king was in high spirit. I want you to underline that when the king was in, was in high spirit from wine, he commanded his seven eunuch. Was, uh, is it good for the king to be in high spirit? To drink Himself to stupor. Let's see what the book of Proverbs 31, 4 to 7 say about that. Proverbs 31, 4 to 7. 31, 3-1. You know, a lot of people preach this virtuous woman, but I preach the virtuous woman from... Proverbs chapter 1, those of you that have been in my class, 1 to 10. And what does it say? It is not for kings, O Lumel. That's the advice of a mother to her son, King Lumel. Look from verse 1. Let's read it. Because here is a king that was drunk. Could you come to this side, please? I don't want anybody on this, on that place. Everybody moving. Usher's moving. <coughs> Nobody stayed to that side. Yes? The saying of King Lumel, an oracle his mother thought him, is the saying of King Lumel. That is, Lumel, King Lumel was reporting this great message. And he said, an oracle his mother taught him. So as mothers, we ought to be teaching our children. We know in the palace, people drink and they enjoy themselves with various drinks, but it's good to drink the Holy Spirit when we are in God's own palace. Amen? 
Verse 2, I want somebody to be fast as you're on that thing. Oh, my son, son of my womb, son of my vow. Do not spend your strength on women, your vigor on those who ruin kings. So he's telling young ones, this is a motherly advice to you mothers, take this on board. Don't spend your strength, don't misbehave and be ca uh, caressing people up and down. Don't do that. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to cave beer. I say, ah, can't we drink, drink beer? You will answer the question by yourself today. Go on. Let somebody take over from that so that you can be faster, please. Time is gone. Lest they drink and forget what the Lord decrees and deprived all the oppressed of their rights. Go on. Give beer to those who are what? Wine to those who are what? In anguish. So someone might ask me, why can't we drink beer? It's only those that are perishing that should drink beer. Uh, beer. Every pub, it is Friday, you go and drink beer. He said, give beer to those who are what? Perishing. Go on. Verse 8. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the right of those who are destitute. That is what you are supposed to be doing. So, but in the case of this king, instead of speaking forth for the oppressed, even though we're not told that King Vashti was oppressed, amen, uh, Queen Vashti was oppressed, but he, is, he, he asked the permission or the advice from his eunuch when he was in high spirit. So uh, in our comment today, was King Ahasuerus cis or saxis lost after alcohol might be a reason for his misbehavior? Yes or no? Yes. Because for a normal king, if he's normal, he wouldn't... He wouldn't have just sent for his wife to show his wife off. Now look at the other comment. Looking at that with Proverbs 1 in mind. Was Queen Vashti's refusal to come and show off herself as the king instructed, right or wrong? Looking at that scripture. If we look at the decision that was taken, if we look at the decision that was taken after, it is wrong for her not to come. But let's see another thing that can help us to be able to agree with uh, what uh, Queen Vashti did. Some say she was right because she was trying to protect her modesty. Some that might have been arguing this point might say she's right because she was trying to protect her, her modesty. She's a, she might be a reserved woman. She might be a woman that has humbled himself and she's trying to... Pro, uh, uh, to uh, Protect her, her being reserved. Why does this man want me to come and show myself off? She might be retensive, uh, 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 reticent, which means inclined to keep her thoughts or her feelings, her personal affairs to herself. There are some people that they just love to be on their own. So she must be reticent. For the Bible says that we must obey our husband in the Lord. So she might be right because if the man is drunk, there is no way that she can obey the man in the Lord because the Bible says we should not drink beer, isn't it? So she might be right because I'm still going to tell you to comment in your exam. That's what we are trying to practice here. Queen Vashti's attitude, King Ahasuerus' attitude, comment, was he right to lust after alcohol? Was he right to uh, 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 celebrate? Yes. Anybody can throw a party and do big banquet. Because you have the money. And for king and queen, they have the money. Remember that both of them were celebrating. And as when he finished the first celebration, he now went to the seven days one. It was in this seven days one that the wine got into his head. May the Lord help us. She might have restrained or reserved herself in style by being reluctant and unwilling. Some also say that she might be 
diffident. That is, the word diffident lacking or marked by a lack of self-confidence. She must have been somebody that lacked self-confidence. And the husband is saying, come. That's the reason why she refused to come. And she must, must have been someone that is, uh, was shy and timid. And when the husband said, come and show yourself to a shy person, she would not like to come. Some others say, others say that she should have submitted to her husband because God was in control, which is true. Because we said even though the book of Esther did not mention God from the beginning to the end, but we can see God's mighty hand in the move of everything in the book of Esther. We can say yes, because God was in control. She has, uh, she have to submit to her husband because God was in control. He allowed it in order to allow Esther to be queen. If we if if we comment on it in this way, that that is a uh, God hands upon the life of uh, 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 um, some say that she should have submitted to her husband. Yes, the hand of God upon the the king. Now he's moving the king to do what he's doing, what he did, because God was in control. He allowed it to, in order to allow Esther to be queen, so that Esther can free the Jews. Amen? So if you have to look at it in this way, then it is okay. But if you have to look at it in the other way, which was, I don't know whether I ended this with you here, is it not amazing that the king who controlled the and rules over 127 provinces, could not control his own household. Is it not funny? So a king that cannot control his own household, should he be a, queen, a king? So because the Bible said that anyone that, does not, that cannot control his household must not uh, uh, be placed in position of leadership. But he's there. Is someone that does not know how to drink moderately, although I'm not advising you to go and drink and say, Mom, you must say we should drink moderately. Amen. So because of, her, of his donkiness, he brought problem into his family. So I want you to keep these comments in your memory so that when we need to be juggling things around in the time of exam, you will know what to write. Amen. Is it not amazing that the king who controls and rules over 127 provinces could not control his own home or wife? And this is what is happening in the body of Christ. A lot of people are in church, serving position of leadership, but they cannot control their home. May the Lord help us and help us to control, to, to put our home in check. Your wife is so rude at home. Those of you that are coming to pray, this is an area of prayer that you have to pray. Husbands in position of leadership, the wives are not in control. When the man say ha, the man say ho. Oh. You know that kind of a thing. I'm coming to church. I don't think I, I can come. Are you listening to me? May we learn from this and make sure that we pray, continue to pray for people that are having problems in their homes. Prayer. We pray that all our men will be rulers over their own homes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Esther chapter 122b. That they will love their wives just as Christ loved the church. Ephesians 5, 25. These are some prayer points. That both husband and wife will submit one to another. Imitate and live a life of love as Christ loved and gave himself as fragrant offering sacrificed to God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, and uh, verse 21. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. And that takes us to chapter 2 of the book of Esther. Because we have finished chapter 1. Amen. Later, when the anger of King Xerxes had subsided, the man was drunk in wine, now the eyes has been opened. He remembered Vashti and what she has done and what he had decreed about her. 
Then the king's personal attendant proposed, let a search be made for beautiful young virgin for the queen. Beautiful who? Young virgin. Paradventure, you are not uh, uh, misuse yourself to lose your virginity. God is looking for beautiful young virgins that he will use. And this, you can also say, people that are physically this way or spiritually pure in heart that will serve God continuously. I think we can put this in this way uh, spiritually. Amen? That God is losing for, looking for people that, have, that their heart has been prepared to do great and mighty things for the Lord. I will be one of those in Jesus' name. Let the king appoint commissioner in every province of his realm to bring all these beautiful girls into the harem. Harem is the king's palace, another side of the king's palace at the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of Higai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women. And let beauty treatment be given to them. Let beauty what treatment be what? Given to them. In the physical, we need to treat our body. And in the spiritual, we need to treat our body. Amen? What does the Bible say in the book of Corinthians? That is 1 Corinthians chapter, or is it second? Chapter 6, one of the verses there said that uh, our body is the temple of what? Of God. So we must keep our body. And if we look at it spiritually here, he says, let them be placed under the care of Hagar. God send, he will send his angels concerning us. Hagar there stands for God's holy angel, amen, or angels that he has sent concerning us so that we not step a foot against stone. And what does this king's eunuch do? Who is in charge of the women? There are specific angels that God has put in charge of women as well, both male and female, he created them. And God has put these angels in charge so that they can guide us and put us in check. And let beauty treatment be given to them. In the physical, we need beauty treatment. A lot of people look ugly, pimples everywhere and all the rest of that. We need facial scrub. Thank God for the women of royal destiny. Amen. We need facial scrubs. Mothers, don't teach your children to, to, to bleach. Teach them how to use scrubs. Uh, beauty treatment. When you scrub your face and using the appropriate things, good moisturizer is not bleach. Because when the mother is bleaching, the children start bleaching even right from the womb. Hallelujah. Because when they came to earth, the first thing they see on the mother's dressing table, they are bleaching creams. Different ones. By the time you know it, when that girl to get to that age, you will go to the room, and then the child is bleaching. But we need to give ourselves, go to body shop, go to health places. We need to give ourselves good treatment so that our faces will look fresh. I'm not saying when your face is tired, it's different. But when your face is fresh, it's more, you don't just drop any cream on your faces. Go to the uh, uh, boots, go to super drugs, go to health shops and get the appropriate one to use for your face. We have oil of oil's moisturizer, we have a Revlon moisturizer, we have cocoa butter, we have all these things. Ah, it makes me black. No, that's the color of your skin. Because I've asked someone, I said, use cocoa butter. I said, no, it makes me black. No, it's the color of your skin. Maybe you've been bleaching. Amen. All these things that they've made, coconut oil, they are there for you. Palm kernel oil, they are there for you. Use all the oils that you can use, and the Lord will help us. Because in the case of Esther here, he guy was assigned so that they can give Esther a beauty treatment. All, all these girls, beauty treatment. And that's one of the things that made Esther to find favor before the king. What I'm doing now, I'm giving you a type of therapy, amen? Therapy of the word of God. And when we use the word of God, what happens to us? It's a treatment. The word of God is used as a treatment for the heart, for the soul, and for the body. When you use the word of God that you are getting here, then you find favor before the great, great king of kings. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why I said he has assigned his angels concerning us. As I'm teaching the word, the angels of God, 
They are helping as well and uh, helping to direct the word of God so that it can be made appropriate in your lives. Then let the girl who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This advice appealed to the king and he followed it. Now there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jair. This is going to come out when I set my questions. Amen. Mordecai is the son of who? Jair. The son of Shimei. The son of Kish. Those, those of you that are Bible students, you will know that Kish, the name Kish, is mentioned in the book of 1 Samuel, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 2, 1 to 16. That is Saul's father. Amen. So Mordecai is from that generation who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, among those taken captive by Joachim, king of Judah. Mordecai had a cousin named Adase. The other name for Esther is called what? Hadase. Abiadasa, whatever. Amen. <laughs> so maybe we, when we begin to name children now, those of you that don't know, you can name Adasa. Amen. Like we have uh, Malachi, we have Nehemiah, we have Micah. We have them in cathedral. I don't know whether we have started giving such names here. But let's begin to give Adasa. Amen. And these Adasas are also the young ladies that will be, uh, uh, my Susannas will be bringing up as well. So Susannas, take note. You begin to have others as young ladies because we want to begin to raise young ladies in this church so that what we are seeing will not be seen. You will see, as we begin to read, Esther, everything that Esther was told was what Esther did. She was not disobedient. And she found favor before the king. So we want to begin to raise young girls. Parents, submit your girls to us so that we, we'll be able to work with them. So that we not have regret, like some older ones are having regret. I wish I, I've been put through this. My life wouldn't have been this. There have been no regret. Amen. Amen. As we have jewels in the crown, we are going to also have others. We are going to have those girls that are, are coming up. They are not children. They are going to be in, the, in, the, in their teens as well. Do you understand? Late teens to like 21. We are going to have this because it's from that late teens that head is uh, rolling. Amen. When you begin to tell them one, they talk two. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Which catch them young from jewels in the crown. Then they graduate into uh, Adase. So the group Adase will come up as we are studying it as well. Adasa. You know what they are called Adase? I don't know. Adasa. He said, uh, Mordecai had a cousin, verse 7, named Adasa, whom he had brought up. Because he had neither father nor mother. You know, we raised the Mordecai group. We are still expecting more of you to come on board. It's not only your children that you look after. Mordecai group, you'll be able to release. We are sponsoring some to learn instruments. We are sponsoring them. They, we, we pay the school. They come. I'm a Mordecai, and I'm proud to say so in Jesus' name. Don't just sit down on your own and begin to think about your own head there. I know. We have, we have made room for you as uh, Mordecai to help us so that we can be able to raise all these other stars and all these jewels in the crown that are studying. Only parents, we have to commit themselves in uh, buying the guitar, you know, but in sponsoring, we want to see people now. We want to sponsor candidates that can do well in music. Amen. We're starting from uh, flute, and they're playing the flute. The flute, we are not... Parents yeah, get the flute, but it's some people that are connecting and paying the instructors. So just know that. So we need more. I'm using this opportunity, more Mordecai, to join us. You can see Sister MEC for that. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. So that we can raise our young ones and uh, get the Adasa, whom he had brought up because he had neither father nor mother. This girl who was also known as Esther was lovely in form and features. You know, the Bible says we are wonderfully and what? Beautifully made. And Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. When the king 
order and edit had been proclaimed, many girls were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Igai. Esther also was taken into the king's palace and entrusted to Igai, who had charge of the harem. The girl pleased him and won his favor. Immediately, he provided her with her beauty treatment. Amen? Amen. Beauty treatment. When you beautify yourself in the Lord, you look glorious for Jesus. And special food, like the case of Daniel. He assigned to her seven maids, selected from the king's palace, and moved her and her maid into the best place in the harem. Esther had not revealed her nationality and her family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do what? To do so. Is a child that listens, is a, is a girl that listens as well. Every day he walked, if, if it were some people, they would have revealed themselves long, long time ago. Every day he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. That is Mordecai, a caring uncle. Before a girl turns ca came to go into the king's success, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatment. 12 months, don't forget, of beauty treatment. Prescribed for the woman. You see, you need to beautify yourself in God. Amen. Six months with oil and myrrh. Oil of ma, this is oil of ma. This is one of the oil that was presented to Jesus when Jesus was born. They are very sweet. Uh, they have sweet smelling aroma, and uh, you use them for the body. And six with perfume and cosmetics, perfumes and cosmetics. So for once, for six months, with oil of ma. Another six months with perfumes and cosmetics. So those of us that know how to use perfume or don't know how to use perfume, let's follow Esther's style. Go to a perfume shop. Get it sprayed on the paper and smell it well. Don't just put perfume that will make you smell horrible. You know? Make sure that you smell it well. So it ha perfume is in the Bible. You don't need to be smelling okra or smell pandedia or smell stockfish. Or smell fish. Do you understand? Use perfume, perfume spray, and all the rest of that. There are cheaper ones. You have a roll on. If it's 69p one that you can afford, go and get the roll on and use it. The Lord, God is happy about it. And uh, we, we also know in the book of Ruth, when uh, Naomi was advising, uh, preparing Ruth for marriage, he began to tell Ruth, wash. Perfume yourself so that you can get before the presence of the king. So perfume is allowed in Christendom. And spiritually, we need to wash ourselves with the word of God as we are teaching now, right now tonight. And perfume ourselves with the Holy Spirit. Then we can be able to get to the presence of the king. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit stands as a perfume for us. And in the physical, it's not, you are not worldly. Get your own size. Get the one that you can afford that is affordable to you. Don't say you don't have money for perfume. And then when you come, your body is smelling. It's not good. Sweat makes you smell. Go to work all morning. If you don't perfume, if you have not prepared yourself, then you smell. The king is not happy. Amen? God is not happy when we smell. As I went through this beauty treatment, let us give ourselves to beauty treatment. Amen? Thank God for all this Mary Kay and the, and the rest of that. If you can't afford that, go to other places. So the Bible says uh, the girl pleased him and won his favor. Immediately, beauty treatment and special food was given to her. God assigned seven, uh, um, uh, the king assigned seven maids to work on her behalf. When we look good in God, when we, look, we take God's thing seriously, God will assign for us angels. Amen? And they will join us in anything that we do. He said, I will send my angels concerning you, Psalm 91, so that you will not step your foot against stone. Esther had not revealed her national... No, 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 no. Then goes to verse 13. And this is how she will go to the king. 
Anything she wanted was given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening, she would go there and in the morning return to another part of the harem to the care of Shashgas, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of concubines. May the Lord help us. So we just remember that name, Shash Gash. Who is Shash Gash? She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summon her by name. You know, a lot of times, a lot of us cannot go to the presence of God because we are dirty. Some have been messed up. We are dirty. Our heart physically is full of grudge. It's full of problems, so we are dirty. There's no way we, the, the angel can lead us to, to the presence of the king, the, the presence of the king of kings. There are things that are buying and selling in our lives, and hence we cannot get to the presence of the king. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. The king Enoch, who was in charge of the concubines, she would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. When the turn came for Esther, the girl Mordecai had adopted, the daughter of his uncle, Abihel. And that you can see. Who is Abihel? Esther's father. You must know that. To go to the king. She asked for nothing other than what he guy, the king's Enoch, who was in charge of the harem suggested, which shows that Esther is a girl that pleases God. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. She was taken to King Zazis in the royal residence in the 10th month, the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approve her more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head. This is one of the scriptures that we stem on in the women of royal destiny. Amen? So anyone that pleases the king, anyone that has a royal style, the royal crown will be set on her head and will be the queen of the day instead of Vashti. May we not be a Vashti in Jesus' name. And the king gave a great banquet, which is called Esther's Banquet. You know, there are several banquets in these uh, scriptures. We had already seen three banquets. When I said that there are four banquets in the book of Esther, Esther, uh, Esther chapter 1 and 2, name them. We have the Esther's Banquet. For all nobles and officials, he proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and displayed distributed gifts with royal liberality. Amen. Esther was celebrated. Anyone who pleases the king of kings, the lord of lords, you will be celebrated. Amen. Promotion will come from different ways, their places. And you just see everything will be coming yafu, 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 if you allow me to use that African language. Hallelujah. <laughs> Things will just be happening around you, and the people will be looking at you. How are you the only one? No. It's because you please the king. May we continue to please the king of kings in Jesus' name. When Esther pleased the king, a royal crown was set on her head. That means that that is a way, a leeway to, a way to the throne. He was promoted immediately to go straight to the throne. And because of her, celebration started. The king celebrated Esther. There are a lot of times that parents celebrate their children. Because of the type of children that they, that they are, parents celebrate them in various ways. When you have your graduation, we celebrate you. We know it's not easy for you to go to school and read and read and read and read. When you are getting married, we celebrate you because you have not brought shame. When you are doing something great, we celebrate you. May we celebrate every one of you in Jesus' name. In your office, they celebrate you by promoting you because at times you are in a level, they say, no, 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 no. She's more than that. He's more than that. So your boss, your director, they celebrate you. The next thing you see, they promote you because of the great wisdom that you have displayed in your job, because of the concern that you have showed towards the things of God. Even ministers, they celebrate you. 
and say they celebrate you. So you can, we, can, we can see here, if we man can celebrate ourselves, how much more, how much more God? When God celebrates you, <laughs> things will begin to happen in your life like never before. You can see when Esther was celebrated, they named the feast after her, Esther's Banquet. Amen? May bad things not be named after us. Some say that uh, uh, some, something, the, 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 the arm robber, when you are looking on the television, may that not be you. That's the way they can be celebrated. So when the king of kings celebrates you, things happen in your life. And when parents celebrate you, children, you are hearing, when you please your parents, they celebrate you. They celebrate you. I was talking the other day of a friend that we met, long, long time friend. And we just met him somewhere here in London. You know, like an African man, when he met us, the first thing he asked, oh, how are you? Oh, we are still together. Praise God. Oh, I've come for my uh, son's graduation. He didn't ask. Started celebrating his children. Say, we have come, I have come for my son. My daughter is just, uh, you know, to send someone from Nigeria and pay their school fees here. It's not a joke. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I know it's not a joke now that it has been increased here and for us here. But to send your children from a, a boy, and he's talk, talking, ah, he's, uh, we are, I'm doing the graduation, was just talking, talking, talking. You know, boss was just looking, ah, I have to celebrate my children too. Amen. Because before, before I even speak, he now started asking about my own children. My husband kept quiet. I said, no, I have to celebrate my children. <laughs> so he was asking. I began to blow it. <laughs> I started blowing it. <laughs> I said, many because we, it's, you know, when we're just girlfriend and boyfriend that we know each other. You know, he too has been married. He's been a wonderful uh, a man. From beginning, is part of the people. You see apostles still studying today. They are the ones that study in those days, and they will put their legs in cold water so that they will not sleep less night. I'm not surprised. He became a medical doctor. He was telling us, I mean, I'm now a professor of medicine. And now this, you know, he was so proud. He said, my, my daughter is this. My, my other one is just gained admission. I'm still coming in the body. That's okay. <laughs> I started blowing my own trumpet, too. My daughter is this, my son is this, and my baby is this. Oh, he said, I respect you. He said, I'm not surprised. Because, you know, in those days, he used to call uh, my uh, apostle, Paul Willie, more Paul Willie, you know, it's Williams. He said, I remember in those days when we were studying, we know we make it. I know you will make it. Amen. So you want to do things that will celebrate you, not things that will bring shame to us. So children hear this, adults hear this. We want to do things that apostles will celebrate us as members in this church. And it shall be well with us. Amen. said, when the virgin were assembled a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. I'm reading verse 19 going to 20. But Esther had kept secret her family background and nationality, just as Mordecai had told her to do. For she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as he had done. You see me pronounce that Mordecai's word? Instructions. May God grant us grace so that we can follow the instructions of this house. Of our Mordecai, as she had done when he was bringing her up. That is, an obedient child or girl. She obeyed and hence she was successful. During the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthana, I want you to mark those two names, Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's of officers who guarded the doorway became angry and conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. But Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who in turn re reported it to the king, giving credit to Mordecai. And when the report was investigated and found to be true, the two officials were hung on a, on, on a gallows, or on gallows. All this was recorded in the book of Annals, in the presence of the king. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. The book of Esther is an interesting book. We looked in this, in this very chapter, Esther was made queen. 
Anyone who pleased the, the king of kings will be made queen. Queen. And a royal crown will sit on their head. Read my notes here. I said, after the king's anger subsided, that is, he, st he was still drunk and angry at the same time. So that's double tragedy. So after his anger subsided, one of his personal attendants advised him that such should be made for a beautiful, for beautiful young virgins, and they should be brought to king's palace for a guy to look after the king, uh, for a guy who looks after the king's wives to give them beauty treatment or therapy. Any one of the queen of the virgins who find favor before the king will be queen instead of Vashti. May we not be replaced in Jesus' name. Then let's look at the background of Mordecai, which I'm going to ask you in the future, the origin of the background of Mordecai, and how he was related to Esther Hadassi, or Hadassah, his cousin, whom he raised or brought up by himself since the death of her parents and adopted her as her own daughter. Hadassah is Esther's Hebrew's name. Let's not forget that. Mordecai was from the family of Benjamin, the background of Mordecai. He was from the family of who? Benjamin. This chapter 2, 5 to 7 mentioned it. The son of Jair. I said, could you tell us, the, uh, discuss Mordecai's background? Then discuss. These are the things that we want you to, to, to write. He was from the family of Benjamin, the son of Jair, who was the son of Shemer. Shemer was the son of Kish. Kish was one of the Jews whom Nebuchadnezzar took from Jerusalem to Babylon with Joachim, the king of Judah. That you can see in chapter 2, 5 to 7. Esther and other girls were entrusted to Higai who was in charge of the king's palace or the king's harem. Esther, being an obedient girl, pleased a guy and won his favor. The book of Isaiah 119 says, If you are willing and obedient, you eat the best of the land. May God help us to be willing and obedient like Esther so that we can eat the best of the kingdom. Immediately, these are the things that were done to Esther. They, I wrote here one, two, three, four. There are five things, and I want you to quote them later on when we look back to discuss Esther. Esther was provided with how many months uh, beauty treatment? Twelve months. You must know that. And in, within these 12 months, six months, Dedicated to her uh, uh, was the oil of myrrh. And the second six months, perfumes and cosmetics. You must know that. Don't just say Esther was provided or prescribed with, uh, during her beauty treatment uh, uh, with uh, what? And for how many months? And you'll be able to explain it. Twelve months in a whole, but six months of oil. Uh, uh, with oil of ma and six months with perfumes and cosmetics. So that she was taught how to use cosmetics. She didn't just come and put eyeliner or put eyebrow and just put stamp something here and stamp something on the, on the eye like that. She didn't do that. She was provided, was etiquette in the makeup. She knows how to apply the makeup. A lot of you, when you are getting married there, that's why we see the show. I think, uh, Susanna, you have a lot to do. When they stamp those eye things and they look like witch, witches, <laughs> do you understand? Beauty treatment, they rub their pancake here. The thing when they are sweating, different mark is coming on the face and you're looking horrible. Yes, I have to, for you to serve in the household of faith, you must know how to apply this makeup properly. If it's only oil that you use on your face, use that oil very well. We don't want to see you use oil. Because then you are not scrubbing your face. Otherwise, you don't use facial scrub. Beauty treatment. You need to get facial scrub. Uh, what is simple 
facial scrub is the cheapest in the market, although it's very expensive now that people discover that, uh, you know, he's doing a great, uh, he does a great job. Oh, I don't use makeup, but do you scrub your face? It's necessary. Palm kernel is what Africans use. And you see them in body shop now. They crush it very well. And they put a little bit of soap and everything just to make the face smooth. One of you, the pimples that on your faces can even kill Goliath. <laughs> so Esther had a very good beauty treatment. So let's not let our face be fresh in serving God. Our faces must be, must be fresh. At least you have seen it in the Bible here. Uh, don't use makeup. Don't use this. Don't use that. Yes, but when you use it wrongly, then that's the, that's the reason why there is a problem. Some of you scream, thank God that they are now bringing the makeup back. Because I did cosmetology. And, you know, they scrape their faces. I, their I, 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 what do you call this one again? Yeah. Eyebrows. Scraped. And then you use eye pencil to be doing eyebrow. Who taught you that? <laughs> or some of us follow this... Uh, the Asian thing, they, they, they remove it and put a permanent one. When you get to heaven, God doesn't know you anymore. Because you are carrying permanent eyebrows. May the Lord help us. Permanent eyebrow. And you go and use your money to do it. You say, you don't have time to be making up, so you will permanent one. Some will draw their eye, eyebrow up to here. Your eyebrow, you know, they draw it up to here, pretty. You know, who are you deceiving? You need to go to, we will begin, we begin this Esther's class now. So that I'll be teaching people how to make up. Charlie, Susanna, you have a lot to do. So that we'll be teaching all these, our ladies, all our girls, how to apply makeups. And cosmetics. So these are the things that Esther, they were given to Esther as treatment. 12 months of beauty treatment, 6 months with oil of myrrh, and 6 months with perfume and cosmetics. Was given special food. Don't eat anyhow. Special food. Moderation. That's what he's talking about. You know in the palace, you don't eat just anyhow. I'm looking at some of you when we go to party, the way you, you, you bombard your plate and the whole thing is like full the whole plate. Two to three tablespoons of rice is okay. Or two to six tablespoons is okay. Carbohydrates must not be too much on your plate. You don't just put everything there. By the time you are eating, then you begin to have problems. Kidney is having problems. Something is having problems. Uh, gallstone is coming. Everything is coming because you have eaten carelessly. May the Lord help us. So Esther was giving special food. Make, make sure your food is special. Eat balanced diet. Don't eat bread today, bread tomorrow. You can finish a whole loaf of bread. Charlie, women among us, let's, let's just take it easy, please. Amen. By the time you know it, the pot belly is coming. You don't know who's pregnant. <laughs> Amen. You see, from studying the Bible, let us be moderate in anything that we do. God is looking for moderation. God is looking for moderation. Amen? Let your meal be special. You know, I started eating salad, and salad wants to kill me. I start smoothing, uh, smoothing uh, 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 salad now. I juice it, and I drink it. Because I get fed up with it, I say, oh, many salad do you want to eat? And so juice it and drink. Just drink as you go. Do you understand? You have eaten, and it's fine. Seven maids were selected and assigned. To have for the uh, from the king's palace. Number one, treatment, beauty treatment, and you'll be able to explain it. Number two, special food. Number three, seven maids were selected and assigned to her from the king's palace. When you do well with God, God will assign his angels concerning you. When you serve well in church, people will serve you. Amen. You know, sometimes I tell people I didn't select anybody to be serving me. People just fall in position. Amen. When you are doing the right, people will serve you. Not you don't see my Bible. Can you take my Bible? Can you take this? Can you controlling people? No, you don't need to control them. They will serve you when they see that you are working well. It's not because of, I'm Apostle's wife. Amen. 
she was moved together with her mate to another special, exceptional, and outstanding, or a unique place in the harem. Position change. She was offered a new home. A lot of us have been looking for mortgages not coming. Do you understand? When the favor of God comes upon you, story will change by force. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Esther was moved. Yes, he, he's a foreigner. She was moved to a new place. New accommodation was made necessary for her. Let us serve God, brethren. Let us serve God with fear and trembling. When we serve God with fear and trembling, things begin to happen in our lives. Things begin to happen. You, you pinch yourself. You say, ah, is it me? If it happened to Esther, it will happen to us. In Jesus' name. For all this period, Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had warned her not to do so. Although Mordecai revealed it, when we get to the next chapter, you will see it. But Esther was somebody that kept secret. Even when, the, maybe when horrible things happen to her, if it's some of us, ah, is it because I'm a, I'm a refugee here? You think because of my, ah, hey. He would have revealed it, and then Esther wouldn't have become king. But she did not reveal her nationality. Esther won the favor of the king, and a royal crown was placed on, on her head. She was made queen instead of Vashti. May God not replace us. In Jesus' name, the king gave a great banquet for all nobles and officials named Esther's Banquet. Or, if it's K King James Version, he said Esther's Feast. And I will call it Esther's uh, Banquet. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts with royal Liberality. This chapter ended with Mordecai, who reported a conspiracy to assassinate the king, the king to assassinate King Xerxes, or Ahasuerus. When this plan was investigated and found out to be true, both officers, Bigthana and Teresh, were, <coughs> were hung on gallows. This was recorded in the book of records or annals or chronicles. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I rest my case here. Do we have any question? Okay. Look at the five points so that you don't forget it. Even though it's open book, but I will still ask you. What was the special treatment? given to Esther, or they made available to Esther. She was provided or prescribed with 12 months of beauty uh, treatment or therapy, six months with oil of mare, and six months with perfume and cosmetics. That you can see in Esther because I say, uh, quote the scripture. Esther chapter 2, verse 12. She was given special food, number two, she was assigned with seven mates. Seven mates were selected and assigned for her from the king's palace. A girl that pleases the king, God will assign his angels concerning that girl or that person. Number one, two, three, four. She was moved together with her mates to another special or outstanding or a unique place in the harem. Her position changed. Grace was upon her. You know, the man of God talks about grace and mercy. When you find mercy before God, what happened? Grace will follow you. Amen. So these are the things that happen to Don't forget them. Any other question? Yes? The fourth one... One, two, three.
three, four. You see the 12 months, maybe you put the six months of oil and everything, they are one. The therapy, 12 months therapy. Then special food. She was given, selected uh, and assigned mates, seven mates. And she, uh, she moved together with her mate to another special place. She was given a special place, a unique place in the harem. If Esther has been living in this, uh, maybe on top of that place, maybe was sent to Apostle's office there, round about. Do you understand? Or maybe they move, uh, the, the, let's say, you know the king's rules over a lot of provinces, from Bethesda to Cathedral. You can, you can imagine the difference. So that's how I see it. A special place of honor. Any other question? Yes? Could you take microphone? Give, uh, give him microphone. My own is a kind of an insight into some of the things we've been learning today. Um, there is a tendency for someone to think that, for me, let me just say for me, some of the things here are just, personally I think the chapter is about edifying or kind of pointing us to the decency of uh, uh, Esther. Because some of the rituals that were being, you know, by King Zazi, King Zazi to me is not an example of somebody somebody wants to be like, because there are things that he's doing, the ritual, the attitude towards, you know, women, somebody don't want to emulate that. And so it is very important that our young ones here knows that, look, even though we are asked to, or, I mean, we are taught to present ourselves, but not to the extent of deliberately doing things that we probably cause others to say. Because, mommy, if you look at, uh, it's a kind of a fashion parade that was, you know, if you look at, yeah. And so, and if the Bible says, um, according to all the Ten Commandments and some of the things that apostles are teaching us, there is a tendency for those who are not mature in mind, oh yeah, um, I want to please him. People who deliberately try to set other people up, and for the young ladies, don't think that, oh yeah, um, yeah, he's in a big position, he's in position of authority, oh I am pretty, and you start to deliberately scheme to make other people. So that is dangerous. Some of the things we need to learn is about Esther. I think Esther, I mean, the, these passages is to just point to us that Esther is a very righteous woman, she was given an instructions by the parent. She obeyed to that instructions, and that is the summary of what I can get from here. Otherwise, um, I just want to place this thing for the benefit of our young ones. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for that contribution. It's the same thing that I've been saying. You know, even young ones and matured ones, we have to emulate Esther. In dressing, we have to emulate Esther. He said, everything that was told Esther is what Esther did. Esther followed the instruction. Esther did not leave school and go to perfume shops. Esther waited for the one that was given to, do you understand what I'm saying? And also to teach our parents, it must be a uh, 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 he guy in our homes. Go out and shop for your children. Don't let them come and steal your money to go and be buying because in this era, there are a lot of things that is going on. You know, Esther's time, they, they will have perfume shops and everything. But being a queen, she will be provided uh, with everything. Today, some of our young ones, our parents, parents, when they provide them something, I don't think this is what, this is my style. That is what our... Uh, Uncle is trying to say there. This is your first time? Yes? So if, if it's nobody's first time, then let's quickly go to offering time, blessing time.